Rachel Graff, Director of the Child Development Institute here at Sarah Lawrence College. And I have the privilege of introducing you to this year's great lecturer, Dr. Susan Lin. It's our collective good fortune to find ourselves assembled on this sunny day, though we're inside, to spend time with Susan. We're lucky to be with her because, for one thing, she knows what she's talking about. She's researched, written, and lectured widely about the effects of media and commercial marketing on children, as well as about the importance of creative play, an issue very close to our own hearts here at Sarah Lawrence. In addition to holding positions as the Associate Director of the Media Center at Judge Baker Children's Center and as instructor in psychiatry at Harvard University, Susan publishes extensively, is involved in creating educational videos and public service announcements, and has won awards and accolades far too numerous to list here. We're also most lucky to be with Susan this afternoon because she knows how to act she has played a leadership role in coalitions and campaigns dedicated to stopping commercial exploitation of children and has been instrumental in garnering media attention for this important issue. Through the Campaign for a Commercial-Free Childhood, which she also directs, she and her colleagues have successfully forced corporations to alter harmful marketing practices, drafted legislation to protect children from commercialization at school, and engaged a broad group of stakeholders in ongoing activism. People who combine analysis and action are all too rare. And people who add to this a playful talent for puppetry comprise a very, very small set indeed. Susan Lin, though, has it all. Critique, care for our collective future, and creative play. As an emissary of Sarah Lawrence, I want to thank you heartily, Susan, for coming to be with us today. And as a parent of two school-aged children, I want to thank you heartfully for all you do to assure that young people are able to preserve time to play, to dream, and to imagine for themselves who they want to be and how they want to live. Please join me in giving Susan Lynn the warmest possible welcome. Wow, what a wonderful introduction. It's a hard act to follow, I think. Um, I, I really want to thank the Child Development Institute for inviting me to give this lecture. I'm just a big fan of the work that you do here. And, um, and so I'm really uh, happy to be here today to talk with you about the very troubling problem of advertising and marketing to children. And as I talk about commercialism in the lives of children today, there are some things that I want you to keep in the back of your mind. And one of them is that the marketing that you knew when you, would, or when you were a child is not the same as the marketing that kids are immersed in today. These days, it's honed by child psychologists. It's, it's brought to us by a ubiquitous and increasingly miniaturized technology, and it's made possible by huge amounts of money. So to put this in perspective, in, in 1983, companies were spending about $100 million annually targeting children with marketing. Um, anybody want to take a guess um, about how much they're spending today? Just guess. A hundred billion? <laughs> Talk about hard acts to follow. No, it's not a hundred billion. Not, at least not just in the United States anyway. But it is 17 billion, about 17 billion. I mean, that is an increase of 170 times in about 25 years. It's a huge business. And, not, and so, when you were a kid, even, even the youngest of us here, well, not the very, very, very youngest here, <laughs> the youngest adults here, uh, mostly parents had to worry about television. 
right? That when you thought about commercials and you thought about advertising to children, you thought about, um, you know, parents worried about television. They worried about Saturday morning programming. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was Mickey Mouse Club, you know, there was Heavy Duty, there was Mickey Mouse Club, you know, even in, in the 1970s, early 1970s, there started to be more television. Maybe for some of you, you were y young enough so that you're, you had videos as well. But these days, parents are worrying about not just television, but also the internet. And television and the internet are, of course, actually merging. They're worried about advertising on DVDs. They're worried about MP3 players. They're worried about cell phones. Um, marketing in schools is a growth industry these days. Um, there's all sorts of different kinds of marketing, some of which you see up there. There's um, stealth marketing, and one of the things that's happening is that people don't even know that they're being marketed to. So for kids who have, um, have Facebook, and increasingly younger children are on, on Facebook and social networking sites, I mean, they really don't know whether when some, one of their friends mentions a brand, if their friend really likes the brand or if the, their friend has somehow signed up to market the brand. I mean, they, they just don't know. When brands appear places, I mean, kids really have no idea. Um, I, mean, there, I mean, there's no way to know whether a corporation is paying for that or it's some kind of viral marketing or word of mouth marketing that may have been started by somebody who works for a company but is continuing just because that's what people do. In fact, one of the things that companies are doing now is boasting about how, how much less money they may have to spend on advertising because we're doing the advertising for them be through viral marketing. And one of the things about, the, and viral marketing, um, for those of you who don't know, it's, um, it's passing um, word, a word about a brand on to your friends or, or on to other people. And one of the things that the um, advertising industry and um, particularly the music industry likes to do, they like to go in the neighborhood, into a neighborhood and find kids and, and give the kids products. And so what, what they do is they go into a neighborhood and they ask for the coolest kid. Well, who's the coolest kid around? And so somebody will say, well, it's that kid, and they'll go to that kid, and they'll say, who's the coolest kid? And that kid will say, what's this kid? And they'll go to this kid and say, who's the coolest kid? And they'll say, well, it's that guy over there, or that, you know, over there. And so they'll finally they'll get to somebody who'll say, well, it's me. <laughs> and that's who they want. And so all they have to do is give that child or that, you know, that child products, and, and the child can start distributing them to, to their friends. And so we've actually reached a point where marketing is influencing children's friendships. And so you don't know when a friend of yours said, hey, I heard the greatest band, if they really like the band or if somehow they've gotten something in order you know, to say, I, you know, I, 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 you know, I really like this brand. I mean, one of, one of the, the, the most um, powerful and well-known uh, companies that does this kind of stealth, viral, peer-to-peer um, -peer marketing is a company called the Girls Intelligence Agency. It's the, not the CIA, it's the GIA. And, and the GIA claims to have tens or, or, um, uh, or hundreds of thousands of young girls around the country who are, who are hooked into the Girls Intelligence Agency and who have relationships with marketers in the Girls Intelligence Agency. And the, girl, the marketers at the Girls Intelligence Agency kind of, um, they act sort of like big sisters. So they flatter the girls and they say to the girls, you know, not everybody can be in the GIA. We just want, you know, we want kids who are popular. We want the popular kids in the GIA. In, in, in the GIA. And so the girls are, are actually encouraged to, to give information, market research information, not just about themselves, but also about their friends. And kind of the signature piece of the Girls Intelligence Agency is called Pajama Party in a Box. And what happens is that the girls are encouraged to have a pajama party.